Now, do these drugs make people schizophrenic? No. What I think happens is that people who are beginning to find their thinking becoming a little disordered, who are getting a bit cosmic in their, their overall construing style, find these drugs very attractive and rush in and take too much. And in fact, what you can have with any drug like this is, is this sort of psychological crisis. Interestingly enough, what you can do, you can manage these things relatively effectively. So what you need to do is to have um, a period of, of medication where people are tranquilized and calmed and reassured, and many people will recover from those experiences without any permanent damage. My vision started to, to really sort of start going astray. All my, everything in the room and all the people that were there started to sort of not quite float, but sort of drip and melt, all sort of Salvador Dali-like, you know, dripping clocks. Physiologically, I sort of like lost, lost the feelings in my body and like I'd, my hands no, no longer could, could uh, I couldn't feel anything that I was holding. I, was, I remember walking around the house and the, the floor was moving. It's like a, a bit like a magic carpet ride, really. It was just like roaming up and down the little, the little uh, turrets in the carpet and the carpet was coming at you and you were just like rocking with it. My hearing also started to uh, almost fracture. Separate sounds were split up. And so that what you were hearing, what people were saying, you didn't hear until quite a quite a while after it actually been said, and even when when I spoke myself, it was hard to realise that I was actually speaking until a little bit later on. Walked into a few rooms and remember looking in a mirror and thinking, "Whoa!" And all around me, in a total 360 degrees, were little creatures, like just little creatures with little skeletons. I'm um, just just going arr, 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 like talking and, and moving and gyrating. And yeah, it will always. Um hallucinate skulls or, or yeah, um... yeah. That, actually this this same trip um, um, I had this this creature in front of my eyes and every time I closed my eyes this this creature would be there going <laughs> and it was there it was there for about four hours I guess wanting to experiment with any drugs is is this is escapism isn't it I mean if you're not happy with your lot or or you want to add an, an extra dimension to your life then you, you try something different and it de depends on how much of a risk taker you are in that respect. But it's also a social thing. I mean, you know, if you go to a party, I mean, people are not smoking marijuana to get high. It's somehow like the old Indian passing the peace pipe. It's a sort of solidarity and camaraderie of getting slightly mellowed out while doing something that's uh, illegal. And, you know, we're all in this together, folks. Magic mushrooms are common on the east coast of Australia, but they've never been seen here in Western Australia until all of a sudden they start growing in this one tiny little patch no bigger than a football field, which is pretty bizarre. There are a lot of theories as to how the mushrooms have arrived in, in the area. Um, one theory that has been banded around that actually calm introduced the mushrooms in the pine forest area. Um, in order that this particular type of mushroom was um, to help break down the pine cones. Now I've got no idea personally how the, the mushrooms um, first started in the area. There has been, it has been rumoured that uh, an old hippie from many, many years gone by brought some back from overseas and, and planted them and have just uh, taken off from there. Now one theory is that magic mushrooms actually arrive randomly on Earth and that they travel as spores on cosmic dust through space and that the hallucinations they provide are actually the messages of aliens 
from other worlds. I think we can dismiss the theory that they're actually of extraterrestrial origin. So how do they make their way to this corner of the woodland in bailing up? Another idea is that they might have blown across the Nullarbor Plain from South Australia, where it's known that they grow, by means of spores. But it's a very, very long way for spores to come to this one spot. The other suggestion is that people actually brought them here deliberately to start some sort of industry in uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms. But one would have thought that they might have chosen the gold tops, a better known and more easily grown a magic mushroom than this particular species. Then there is the suggestion that they were actually introduced by conservation and land management. It's known that they've been working on fungi in association with pine trees, the so-called mycorrhizal association, but it seems very unlikely that they would introduce such a thing without proper notification, being an official body, and anyway, these particular species are not mycorrhizal. So I think we can dismiss this theory. It's this dung growing here, this cow dung, that perhaps gives us the clue, because cattle have been grazing in this woodland for a number of years, and the spores of fungi such as this can actually live in the gut of cattle and be <coughs> excreted and grow in the dung and then spread from that particular point. This would seem to be the best theory of how these particular mushrooms arrived in this particular place. But if you think about it, cattle have been transported all over Western Australia for decades, so why would they only suddenly appear now in this one little patch? Now I spoke to a mushroom picker that travels all around Australia from mushroom patch to mushroom patch to mushroom patch, and I think it's possible that someone like that could have introduced the mushrooms into the area. However, I admit that we probably will never know exactly how the mushrooms came to bailing up. A young eight or nine year old schoolboy who is a bailing up residence was offered a bag of mushrooms for sale by some young people that were obviously down here picking mushrooms and that really upset a lot of people. I, one night I was home on my own and I could see lights down over the brook and it took me a while to realise that that's probably what it was, you know, mushroom hunters but it's just, I, I guess in a small town like bailing up in the country you assume that you've got a level of security that you don't have in the city and it's just, I guess, threatens you a little bit to think that that's um, at risk. It appears that they, they left the scene and also left the fire going at the same time and it appears that this fire had spread to, uh, to the bridge itself and the bridge appeared to, uh, to be on fire. Uh, uh, my wife actually came past from coming home from work uh, one evening and noticed that the, that the bridge was actually on fire. Uh, she informed me of the, of the situation and I in turn uh, informed my um, fire control officer uh, who, uh, who uh, rendezvoused with me on, on site at the bridge and we subsequently put the fire out. The contacts I've had with them, they've been very nice people. There were two young boys there with guitars under the bridge, sheltering from the rain and I had a really nice talk to them. I thought they were great. They do leave a lot of rubbish around, and that's my big gripe. Well, I worked for 10 years in the government office, and I've worked for 25 years in this business, and I believe that I've put a great deal of time and effort into my children, and I believe that uh, I shouldn't be repaid uh, in this way by children taking this kind of drug. I said, did you eat any of them? You replied, yep. Yeah. I said, how many? About half a dozen. What about your mates? Did they eat any? You replied, I don't know. I said, what did you intend to do with the ones you picked? You replied, eat them. Golf 643, Bunbury Bay. 
The media publicity that was generated from these operations obviously assisted us uh, greatly in bringing to the attention of the people that um, the problem with the mushrooms and also the fact that police would be there and uh, we'd do something about the matter. The interesting thing about publicity about drug use is that in many ways it's done in a rather naive view that if you warn people about drugs they won't do them. But in fact we know about media that at the end of the day it's not really what the media does to people, it's what people do with the media they hear. And for many people who don't do drugs, some shock horror about drugs or police arresting people will scare them away from doing what they wouldn't have done anyway. But for people who have an interest, that is in fact the, 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 it's like the oxygen of publicity which is encourages interest, spark interest and actually will make them go off and experiment because they'll actually be informed that yes there are drugs available and yes they are interesting things to do. And I had this really full-on sort of butterfly feeling in my stomach. And it sort of almost moved through my body and became a real full-on cosmic sexual experience. And you know, I hadn't had sex for half a year. They probably contributed to it and helped, <laughs> definitely, I'd say. And, I mean, it went on for like an hour or two. And it was just like making love to colours, making love to you know, smells, sounds. And being at one with them almost was really, really spun out. And there was a person which was interested at the time who was actually there. Who, or it felt like she was there, but she wasn't really there. And I'd love to actually speak to her and see what she felt. So it was a really full on, full on experience. I didn't actually ejaculate, so I didn't have a wank or anything. It was just, um, just a real full on sexual wave that sort of went through, sort of on and off sort of thing. Uh, I'd love to try them again. It was almost like better. It's better than real sex, almost. It's just intense. I'd love to actually make love on them. It'd be a spun out experience, I think. He was a boy. He was a boy. He was a boy. Was a boy. She, she was a girl. Was a girl. Was a girl. It, it was a mush. Was a mush. Was a mush. A particularly, a particularly magic, magic mushroom. 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 mushroom.